Right, so these are the blokes behind Thunderfab. This is Ken and Steve. So these guys have been gun fabbies forever, but um, Thunderfab itself is a relatively new venture for you guys. So why, why Thunderfab and why now and why canopies, I guess? Uh, I think we both enjoy full driving. We've got a passion for it. And um, yeah, we just saw a gap in the market. We both like building things. Thought, why not? Yeah, there definitely is a big gap in the market. Like myself as, a, as the consumer end of it, um, I think I've, I've told you guys before, I've priced up getting a replacement canopy. And yes. I noticed, especially in Western Australia, they were either you know, pretty cheap but really poor quality, or they were almost out of reach, like so expensive for, for decent gear. Yeah. So you guys are, are sort of gonna skate in the middle. Yeah, we're gonna try and meet that middle ground sort of thing. Yeah, build really good quality canopies, but that are affordable. Affordable price, yeah, You're right. yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another thing I really like about these guys, what they're planning to do um, is they're going to have all their prices and their weights and whatnot will all be on their website. So customers will know exactly what they're looking at without wasting their time or your time. So you guys can focus on building stuff. Yeah, that's right. Because we notice pricing things up in the past. You go on the websites and you sort of got to send away for a quote and you're waiting and sometimes you don't get a reply. Yeah. So. We sort of want to have it set up so you've got, like it's all set out, you can pick what you want, it'll tell you how much it is, how much it weighs, and it'll spit out a, a figure at the end of it. So yeah, and white weights too, you're thinking? Yeah, yep, so we'll weigh everything, make sure we're getting all that um, recorded. Which is really important, obviously, for a touring rig, and especially for, you know, in my case, and I'm sure everyone else is the same, really, but um, a lot of these companies want to hide how heavy stuff is yeah um and maybe that's the same with price too they don't want to tell you how expensive it is yeah, until you get yeah. in and you, you sign so, yeah. on the dotted line yeah that, that's the whole like ken was saying the whole idea behind having the website structured so um you know it's it's quite transparent to the to the customer they can look at price look at the weights they can go through do their homework in the background and if they want to proceed um yeah get in contact with us and, and we'll go from there yeah, yeah. And then, so these guys are building me one at the moment, uh, which we'll see some footage of this episode. But then straight after my one, you're both gonna build similar canopies or the same canopies for your two That's vehicles. Right. Probably and just a st slightly different in uh, internal layout to yours. Yeah. You've got the outboard and the tinny on top. Yeah. Um, so customers will be able to come in and actually see your physical one. So they'll know exactly what it's gonna weigh, what it's gonna cost. Yep. They've got options, like you said, for the internal fit out. Yep and then they can see the real thing in the flesh. That's right. Yeah. And just with the, with the internal fit out, that's um, the idea behind having the strut, you know, through throughout the internal, it's part of the structure. Um, so we can sort of, um, you know, piecemeal things, sort of, um, you know, if you want a set of drawers there or you want it off um, up against the headboard side or if you want it on the other side, your fridge, like it's completely customizable. Yeah, and all modular. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. I really like that about it. So, and you know, for instance, if someone's on a bit of a budget at the moment, but they really want to buy a good quality canopy, they could buy the empty canopy now. Yeah. And then down the track, they can look back and they know exactly what it's going to cost them because everything's transparent it's on the website. Yep. Um, they can they can come back and fit, you know, uh, drawers, dividers. You know, if they change their fridge setup or whatever, uh, electrically, you know, the switch panels, the um, underside toolboxes. Yeah, trundle drawer. Uh, water tank, um, jerry can holders, there'll be a whole heap of it. Have a look online because it'll all be on the website by now. Roof rack, tinny rack. Yeah, roof rack, tinny rack, that's one thing that's going on mine. Oh, the outboard slide. Yeah. Yeah. So basically the process for building my canopy, the first canopy, was that we sat down, we drew exactly what we wanted roughly, just sort of sketched it out first and we... Yeah, ran just a few rough dimensions and yeah. what you sort of wanted out of it ran a few measurements and whatnot to get it sort of close to what it was and then you sent it off to an engineer yep um and he sort of 3d modeled the thing like you can see behind us is that solidworks that program yeah yeah I'm, exactly i'm so yeah. impressed with that program but anyway so from that he was he was able to work out exactly where to put gussets and and bracing and whatnot and the internal structure to make it as strong as possible but also as lightweight as possible is that right that's yeah. right yeah, that's exactly right, right. So we're, we're spending a lot of time getting my one 100% right, which has meant a lot of to and fro with the engineer on like really small detail, stuff that probably I wouldn't have thought mattered too much, but I can see now 
that it has a you know an effect on other things if you don't get everything like a hundred percent correct. Yep. yep. Um, and then the idea of, of, of this of this business, what these guys are doing at the moment, to make it really cost effective, they want to get this thing right the first time. Um, they don't want to be fixing up errors over time. So that's why you're putting so many resources into it initially. Um, and then it's going to be a repeatable design. So anyone with a dual cab can come in and buy a 1600 long by 1800 wide canopy. Um, and the fit out will be customizable. You know, like I mentioned before, there's sort of a modular fit out available for it. But the shape of the canopy itself is going to be the same for everyone. Um, the only difference in that is going to be the fill-in panels on the mm -hmm. front. Yep. So yep. fill-in panels and the chassis mounts. Yeah. So these little panels here are going to be slightly different on every vehicle. So that'll be to suit each in, uh, individual vehicle, and also the chassis mounts are going to be different. But other than that, it's going to be the same canopy for anyone with a dual cab, and that's how you're able to really screw that price down and make something yeah. quality. Yeah, you can keep it sort of repeatable and easy to manufacture, I guess. Yeah. Um, and you know how it's going to, you know what the product's going to be every yeah. time. That's right. Tried and tested. Yeah. Um, you know, not only, um, you know, all the simulations done in SolidWorks, but obviously you're going to give it a bit of a beating as well. Well, yeah. that's, that's the Put plan. Spaces, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so these guys have reached out to me because they've, they've been following uh, our big lap series that we did and they've seen that I've absolutely destroyed that, that Chinese checker plate import. So it is an absolute piece of crap um, and I will never buy another one. Every single weld in every single corner is cracked. They're cracked along the actual welds themselves. There's random cracks just from what I'm probably starting from heat affected zones and just tearing through the metal. Um, everywhere if you come in that corner there tiff can you see that angry one there maybe from the inside so it's actually split the whole way along here and then it's also can you see it's torn both sides there yeah can you see that and then same on the other side yeah this one's a shocker too i come from this angle tiff and under the, and coming under a bit can you see that? yeah <laughs> every single corner is like that and what's starting to concern me is all in each of these corners all these cracks are starting to come together um, and I am actually genuinely concerned now that I might lose an entire panel it's that bad it's shocking and it makes some noises off road yeah. and they're, they're really confident they can build me something that is going to be way stronger um, yeah. you know, I've told them I want to see 110 kilo tinny on the roof uh, and I want to be doing the same tracks with 110 kilos of tinny bouncing on the top of it. Uh, and these guys are gonna build me something that is gonna hold up to that. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. And I, you know, there's lots of guys out there building these things custom. Um, we sort of, that's how we sort of feel that we can get it um, cost effective and good quality with just the repeatability side of it. Yeah. Um, we get it designed and proven once and then that's it. 1600 by 1800 canopy yeah um, and then you know later on we'll probably look at doing other sizes for you know 79s and yeah dual cabs and single cabs and stuff like that but for now we're really focusing on this dual cab canopy I like yeah. that you want to you want to absolutely nail it the first time that's right yeah yep I suppose all you've got is, is your name hey so if you you got mm. to start off by having a really good product behind you that's exactly right yeah yep. anywho I think we'll wrap this up here um, the video will keep going, but um, thanks, folks, for getting on camera. I know it sucks. <laughs> it's all good, <laughs> mate. But, um, yeah, we'll get you back on the tools, and I'll run around the camera, and we'll have a look at what you're doing. Sweet. Cheers. Cheers, Cam. Cheers, man. Cheers, guys.
Hey lads, how are you? Good. So as you can see, there's a lot that goes into this frame, but they still manage to keep it really lightweight. Um, one of the ways that they've managed to do that is uh, by using an engineer. They send all their dimensions and whatnot um, of what they want the final product to be to this engineer, and he works with them to find, find out exactly where to put the bracing and the gusseting and all that kind of stuff um, to make it as strong and lightweight as possible. One of the other really clever things they decided to do was uh, in the headboard and also the backboard there, this structure is actually made out of, out of this, um, this strut. And what that means is there's obviously less material, so it's gonna be lighter, um, but it also means that you can fix to these. So I can have my electrical panel board and stuff like that fixed to this just by using like those spring bolts that you see, like uni strut style. And there's also, that's also on the roof as well, the whole way along the ceiling there. So I can hang stuff off the ceiling. Uh, I can run all my cable and my conduit through it. It's gonna be in the inside of the door skins. Um, it's also gonna be on the roof and on the back of the vehicle so I can mount different things. So it's really strong, really light, and it's just a really clever idea. Uh, if you're wondering if this makes it any weaker, because uh, it's not a solid square, uh, no, it doesn't. Um, and to be sure of that, one of the things this engineer can do is run something called a finite element analysis. Is that right, Steve? Yeah, mate. Thank you. This is not my field of expertise, so I'm regurgitating this. But basically what the engineer does is he knows I've got 110 kilo of, of tinny that I'm gonna put on top of this. So he can actually simulate that tinny on top, 110 kilos of download in, in static, which means still not moving and dynamic situations. So we can simulate all that weight up top on bumpy full drive tracks, bouncing on top, and he knows exactly how much uh, force it's gonna exert on, uh, in different areas. And so it comes out with a reading, which, is it megapascals? MPA, yeah, megapascals. MPA, yeah, megapascals. Comes out with a reading for how many megapascals of, of pressure or stress or force it's gonna put on different areas. And I'll show you some footage on screen now it actually color codes it. So red is where there's the most force and then the lighter colors is where there's the least amount of force. So that told him exactly where he needs to put more bracing and whatnot. So he knows that the weakest part of uh, aluminum on this entire frame was capable of 110 megapascals of force exerted on it. And the maximum that he got anywhere on this was, was under 50, it was 40 something. So we know that we've got a safety margin of about, worked out to about 2.2. Um, so we're well under ever breaking this thing, which is, really important because you can see what I did to my last one. So what we end up with is a really light, really strong canopy. This was laser cut and um, CNC bent. Yep. Off site. And then uh, you guys have got it to this stage now, just making sure it fits. Yep. And then it's gonna come off, get some sicker in there to fix it and then it's gonna go back on and into place. Yep. So you can see why they, you know, why they had an engineer on this job um, and why everything had to be so precise. I was kind of wondering like when you guys were making the frame, I mean, anything I've ever built, like close enough is good enough, but I noticed you guys were getting to like, you know, you wanted 110 degrees for that bend and you get 110.2 and you're still like tapping it and this is why, eh? Yeah. It's gotta be 100% bang on. That's right. And so it actually wraps the whole way around, it's all one piece. So it's gonna be rigid, less welds, and a perfect fit. So the, the boys weighed the frame yesterday, the frame was 52 kilos. So a couple of people got it, eh? Yeah, two people got it. That's unreal. Yeah, yes, this was a competition on Instagram. The average guess was about 76 kilos, which is sort of what we initially thought. Yep. But um, yeah, 52, two people got it. So it's, I think it's gonna turn out lighter than we expected, eh? Yeah. We've been looking at competitive stuff and that's around. Well, I, I haven't actually checked to see what a chassis mount canopy is weighing from competitors, but I know there's a lot of competitors doing um, a tray mounted lift off stuff and that's 350-ish yep. for tray and canopy. That's the roof in one piece there, Ken. Yes. Yeah. And the floor is in two pieces just to make it easier to get in, eh?
It's going to be a real tight fit, so I don't want to push these right down into place yet until the boys have sicker flexed it. It'll be a get right the first time kind of thing, eh? Yep. But the floors, yeah, floor all fits nicely. These little cutouts are going to be where the door lock mechanism goes, eh? Yep. Um, and just little things they've thought of, like I thought they were just going to notch a hole in there for the latch to go into, but they're actually going to box that out um, so that if you get water or dust or you drop your missus wedding ring or whatever inside there, it's not going to end up floating in this tube. Um, just little bits like that, attention to detail. And yeah, obviously that means this is going to be a flush floor, which means I don't have to build up the floor to fit all my stuff in there, so that's really cool. It's going to be good. So I've got Chloe here with me today and the boys have just got back from the, um, the benders, the cutters and the final pieces of the project are starting to come together. So the guards, you've already welded one of them. Yeah. And the tail light panel, you've selected some cool looking lights for it. Yeah, so we've got some low profile um, LED lights, I think will look pretty cool. Yep. Um, and mine's going to just have the number plate in the middle. Yep, number plate in the middle and a couple of number plate lights. So you were, you were saying that that section, for people that want trundle drawers, that, that whole section will actually be yeah, the end of the drawer. Cover of the draw. There'll be a whale tail on the on the back. Um, yeah, it'll, it'll slide out. That'll look cool. Pretty cool as well. So what we're going to try to do today is we're going to try to get that guard, that back section, um, the toolboxes which the boys have tacked up, ready to weld, and probably one of these filler panels and sort of mock up a whole side, eh? Yeah, get a whole side together. See what it's going to look like. Yeah. The boys have just done a quick mock-up for me to have a look with that new um, light panel, number plate panel, toolbox, guards, filler panel, latches in, and the roof rails on top. That's my spare there. So they're going to use that to get some dimensions off it for the spare wheel, eh, Ken? Yeah. Hang the yeah, spare wheel off the up, back. Okay. Yep. So the spare wheel um, is going to actually mount through the frame inside, isn't it? It's going to be yeah, so pretty tied secure. The, so we utilise these bolts, bolt holes here on the lower 
an upper yeah. framework, just so it's got so something solid to mount on. Yeah, and that's all, all part of the uh, modular sort of stuff you're doing for the back, eh? Yeah, so, so spear wheel holder, jerry can holder, yeah. uh, ladder. Maybe max tracks you're going to look at. Yeah. Max so that's it for episode one of the canopy build. I hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, episode two, the canopy goes off and comes back from paint. So we'll talk you through that entire process. Um, came up really, really good. Yeah, we're really happy with the finish of it. Uh, the old checker plate Chinese canopy comes off. The new one goes on. Uh, you can see it being weighed there. So we ended up weighing both canopies, the new and the old one. And I think the results will really surprise you, especially once you've seen um, the construction of the two. Uh, all the in-house wiring starts to take place, starting with the tail light assembly. Uh, Anderson plug for the tow bar and trailer plug wiring all gets done. And you'll see a couple of tricks from Kenny's shop dog. So don't miss this next one. It all starts to really come together and it looks really, really cool. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Cheers. Bye.